we thought it'd be fun to just talk about some pieces that didn't quite hit the mark for us um, for whatever which reason. Armin, your first pick, an Omega. Yeah, I'm usually a big fan of Omega. I, th I thought, you know, it's not that I don't like this watch. It's really not. I, I, I just wish it wasn't, I don't know, platinum or maybe as expensive. I, I understand the limited... Uh, limited nature of it, which, again, why not make it more special by putting it in a precious metal case? But in this case, I feel like it would be better suited in steel. You know, you don't have a lot of, or any that I can think of, enamel center dials <coughs> in steel. And that, that could be really special. Yeah, there's also, you know, a time and a place for a watch. And it does seem a little odd for Omega to make, you know, this kind of elaborate, complicated watch in a, in a platinum. Like, who are you marketing this to? Who's who's the buyer? Like it's a beautiful watch. Um, I like the color combination. The applied num the indexes are really pretty. But like, it, it, yeah. They Why actually did something really clever with the in indexes too. If if you look closely at the dial, you'll see the cities around the outside of the dial, and they use the hour markers to point <laughs> towards the 24-hour ring, and it makes it actually really easy to read once you. Like an inverted. Yeah, yeah once cool. you really look at it, and so like they they knocked it out of the park with that in in terms of the function and readability aspect. One thing, it's 43 millimeters as well. So I, I would love to see this in a in a 38 <laughs> millimeter or a 41 millimeter. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it's a big platinum watch. You can't really argue with that. Yeah, and again, a time and a place. It's it is a beautiful a beautiful piece. I just I'm with you. Maybe steel would have been better, or you know, some other kind of material um, that's a little bit more attainable. And your second choice. Oh, right. <laughs> again, I love watches. I love all brands except for two, and I won't mention them, but there are two brands that I absolutely can't stand. Tudor is not one of those brands. I love <laughs> Tudor. Um, this was an interesting interesting thing for me because while I, I like two-tone watches, I like Tudor for their utilitarian <coughs> nature. Their, their kind of, you know, I don't, wanna, I don't wanna call it this, but this is how it originally was, the affordable tool watch that was yeah. not a Rolex. You know, I, I like that it's, to me, it's it shouldn't be gold. To me, there shouldn't be gold on it. Maybe accents like yeah. rose gold, like the original Black Bays. Um, but another another thing is the capping. It's the, the center links are capped gold, which I understand keep keep costs down. Yeah. Absolutely, get the same look, and it's much much better than plating. Um, one thing that I thought they did extremely right with this was brushed the links. You never see gold center links that are brushed, and gold looks really cool brushed. Um, Which I guess was probably an attempt to make it a little bit more casual and a more sporty yeah. type thing, but it is a little bit of a contradiction to have, you know, the gold and then to brush it down. Um, I'm with you. I, I don't love it. Um, I think they've done some really cool releases and they've done some really cool straps um, in the last couple years. This just, I'm with you, it wasn't a hit for me. Definitely not a hit. And I usually like black base. Yeah. Um, I'm sh Yeah. I'm with you. I don't think it's it's the strongest, um, but excited to see what they have for the new year. I'm excited for your choices because I actually, I actually disagree with both of these, I and am, I'm so excited. All right, let's battle it out. All little. right. All right. My first choice. I am obsessed with the Yachtmaster Ever Rose with the Cerachrome bezel. It's my grail watch. It's my dream watch. I think it's like everything. You know, it's sporty. It's um, trendy, it's fashion, it's you know utilitarian, it's everything I want in a watch. And then Rolex went and put this bezel on it. Um, and you know, aesthetically, it, it is a really pretty bezel. I just don't get it. Like, the watch is so great, and then they put this on, and it's just like it's a little wacky. I don't know who the customer is on this. Um, I don't know. I, Let's hear it. You this can is, barely contain yourself. I, I over really here. can't. You know, this <laughs> I, I know a lot of people said like this isn't Rolex, this this is not what Rolex is about. But it at the same time it kind of is. You know, Rolex was doing uh, uh, Tiffany Blue Stella dials doing out, uh, outlandish gem setting, and when you see their gem setting in perfect in, in person, it's it's perfect. It it's is flawless. outrageously beautiful. You're and right. while there is a, a full diamond dial uh, version of this, and <laughs> it's I mean, Josh in Hong Kong, you would love that watch. Yes, that is a very Josh watch. But this, I, I see what you mean by you know kind of why. But they do cool things. They put a diamond at the twelve o'clock, so you can actually use the bezel. 
they, you know, it's maybe a little hard to find, but I, I, I think this, I, I think it would be cool. I would own one. You know what? I appreciate that. I, I do appreciate that. Um, to me, it just, you know, Rolex is always trying to stay, you know, they're traditional. They're traditional in so many aspects. And like you said, there are a lot of gem set pieces. And I guess generally they don't get marketed to the average human. You know, it's not in all the blogs and whatnot for the Basel and SAHH releases. So it was interesting to me that they, they took this and they marketed it because we saw a lot of it when it came out. I remember the day it was released and it was a big Man, me talk too. in the, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a big talk in the office and everybody, you know, joking around about it. So I guess, again, I understand that they do these these gem set pieces and Pave Diamond things and whatnot, and they are beautiful. They're really well crafted. I just guess, I, I don't know why they marketed this piece the way they did so front and center. I equate this one to that, the 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 crazy Daytona with the the the, um, the leopard strap and the, the, the yellow and orange sapphires. Like, I'll reiterate, this is something that Rolex has done for a while. <laughs> and, and while it's not, like, what a lot of people love about Rolex, it's, it's what makes Rolex still a special brand. Yeah. Because they do whimsical things like this, and it's, it's so flawlessly done. I mean, I know, I'm, I know, I, know I could read That's through these comments an and probably... That's such whimsical. Right? I know I could read through these comments and probably, you uh, know, yeah. I get torn apart. But, man, I, I stand by that watch. I really do. Um... Yeah, I bet there are some some funny comments on that. <laughs> um, as all of you know, I talk about it all the time. I again love AP. Um, love AP. You know the Royal Oak. These two actually both in their you know traditional design are are Grail watches. Things that I hope to own very soon one day. Um, but I don't know the AP frosted gold this year. Um, I don't even know. I, I don't know. I don't even know where to go with it. Um, you know, to me, part of the Royal Oak and the fascination with the Royal Oak is the finishing. To every any average Joe, you don't understand how much has gone into this. And then you find out how many hours go into, you know, the bevel edges on the bracelet and, and finishing the bezel and, you know, the applied numerals and all the finishing on it. So to me, in its most pure classic form it's the best it, it doesn't need anything else it's the nicest finishing it's so beautiful the brush lines the high polish ah like i love it and then they did this now let me say i have not held it in for a, a long period of time in my hand and i have a feeling it may be something that's like wine it gets better with time and it's something that grows on you and something you really learn to love but i don't know i just think the the original royal oak is just so perfect as is, I just, I don't know. I, I agree with you with the Royal Oak and the finishing. Um, uh, I, th I think the, the head of the Royal Oak has 37 surfaces to finish, which yeah, is outrageous. Um, but I think the, the technique in this is, is very impressive. Um, the, it's, it's a hammered, you know, it's a hammering yeah. technique, which the only thing that I think would be scary with this is ever scratching it. Yeah, like what do you do once it's... Ever scratching it. <laughs> I wonder, again, I haven't held it that long, so I don't know. I wonder if you scratch it, can you see it? Uh, that's, that's what I'm wondering, too. I think the, the way that they do it, it's, it's, you know, it's a deep enough finish yeah. to where it may be a little bit harder to scratch. It yeah. may be, you know, less likely to scratch like a, your, your standard Royal Oak bracelet, which, you know, with the, um, the kind of vertical finishing on it yeah, and the polished edges. Yeah, which one little mark you see. Uh -huh. But that's part, of, that's part of the fun with the Royal Oak, I think. It, I, as somebody who wears their watches, like truly wears them, yeah. um, I like things with a little wear to it. Like uh, Brian's 5980. <laughs> Brian's 5980 is my grail Beat. watch. Is my grail <laughs> watch. Like his specifically is. He wears it. He likes he to wear his it. watches as well. He wears it, and it and it's there's a huge there's a huge scratch across the the bezel, and it's just it couldn't look any better. <laughs> and I think I think that's what um, I might be alone in that actually. No, you know, I, I saw Alan the other day, another one of our colleagues, um, has an AP that had some scratch marks. You know, when you love watches and you wear it, that's what happens, and I think the first scratch is probably the scary one, but... It's always the hardest. Yeah. You could call that the good luck scratch, yeah, though. Yeah, exactly. Know. Um, so, this was really fun. I'm so this glad was, you We were never able, get to talk I, about watches in the office. I know. We never, imagine you know. that. We sit together every day, and we never talk about watches, at least not the fun parts of watches, so... <laughs>